All right, today we're going to talk about humidity. Uh, we're also going to talk about ventilation because the uh, supply ship has arrived from Earth and we've actually got uh, our new ventilation parts here which will help us uh, deal with this humidity problem I'm going to talk about. So uh, let's start at the beginning. Humidity. Uh, humidity is caused by the evaporation of water, uh, the natural water that also exists in our atmosphere which is caused by evaporation. On Mars uh, there is water uh, that they found. Uh, it's frozen uh, beneath the surface, uh, but there's pretty much no water moisture in the uh, atmosphere. And that's because Mars doesn't have a uh, magnetic field. So the solar winds come and actually basically burn everything right off of the planet. So pretty harsh environment. Here on Earth though, uh, the blue planet, we got lots of water. And since we are taking pretty much all the natural systems around us from the creation and putting them into a big building, someday in a box, uh, we have a humidity problem. Uh, humidity again comes from evaporation of water. So let's talk about our water sources. Where do we have water? And why is it such a big problem as compared to normal greenhouses? Well, we have two places where water exists. First, in the fish tanks, and second, in the grow beds themselves. Let's look at a fish tank. So here, <clears throat> underneath the grow lane, we have a fish tank difficult for you to see so let's go underneath and we see there is a fish tank. Right now what's happening is we have water draining from the bed, the grow bed, into the fish tank and uh, that is the natural cycle of aquaponics. That's what we want to have happen. So one of the things that we did to help with humidity here is uh, we put this visqueen over the top of the fish tank so that the water could actually flow. You can see it drip right back down into the fish tank. We just secured it using two, uh, four bolts at each corner. There's one all the way over there. There's one there. And you can see that the water just collects right on top of it and then goes right back down into the fish tank. Sadly, I didn't put this uh, solution in place at first. And what that means is that the air in here was able to absorb quite a bit of water. And now what's happening is the water is condensing on this plastic. Now this is the greenhouse plastic that you would get that is treated to allow uh, the condensation to collect and then roll down the side. Uh, and you can see it is collecting down here. It was recommended that I put uh, basically a French drain around this building, <laughs> around this tent. Um, I really like that idea. I had to do that around the building of course to keep it from flooding. Uh, but this is not, we don't want this at all. So we're gonna try to actually get rid of a lot of this humidity. And again, here you can see it. There's a lot there. So that's a uh, fish tank. That's the first place that we get humidity from. The second place is the grow bed itself. This is a four foot by 12 foot grow bed. <clears throat> so the uh, engineering equations for uh, evaporation say that the rate of evaporation is uh, directly proportional, it's, it's related to the surface area that's exposed to air. Uh, so that's this surface right here when it's filled with water, as well as the flow of air over the top of that surface. Now buried in that equation is temperature as well. So when there is a large temperature difference, uh, you can have more or less evaporation. So let's say that it was 80 degrees. Uh, you would have less evaporation um, because, or I'm sorry, you would have uh, a, a good rate of evaporation, but you would have less condensation uh, because the air is able to hold more of the water uh, that's in it. Uh, the pressure differences uh, between uh, the cold air and the warm air also will create more uh, humidity. So if you have a really cold day outside and the pressure is low and you have really warm air inside then that can create uh, good conditions for humidity to occur, evaporation to occur and create humidity I should say. So <clears throat> we're fighting all those things. Uh, so I thought that the fish tank would be the number one source of humidity uh, evaporation. However, uh, what we've come to find out is that the grow beds themselves are actually the number one source of humidity in here. So uh, we're going to walk back now, kind of show you here as we go. See all the water on the side there? But look at that. Look what starts happening. 
less and less and less and it's almost all gone until eventually it is all gone and why is that because of that guy right there this is industrial size dehumidifier currently we're at 53 percent humidity on this side of the tent um, this is a pretty cool device uh, it uses the basic principles of physics that if I take uh, air and I cool it down, uh, it will uh, any moisture in that air will condense, uh, and as that moisture condenses, it actually releases heat uh, because the uh, <clears throat> the water is going through a phase change, and what that means is like uh, let's say you're in your house and you uh, freeze uh, water, right? It goes from water to ice. Well, what's happening is your refrigerator is actually removing heat. It's taking heat out. Uh, so as heat is released from the water, as it's sucked out of the water, you get a phase change. The opposite occurs when, let's say, you're boiling water. So if you're in the kitchen, you're, you want to make a boiled egg, a poached egg, uh, you put some water in a pan, and what do you do? You heat it. You add heat. The burner turns on, and then eventually you start to see bubbles. What are those bubbles? Those are air bubbles starting to form, gas bubbles, as the water changes uh, from uh, a liquid into a gaseous form, it's released uh, up into the atmosphere as humidity, as evaporation. So uh, what this device does is the same as uh, when you take an ice cube, or when you take water and you cool it, and it creates uh, a phase change. This is taking cool or taking warmer air and cooling it down, and it actually uh, turns that liquid vapor back into water. So it's a pretty cool, pretty cool device. We're gonna have to have lots of this type of stuff up on Mars. Let's show you the backside of it. So uh, here are the coils. These coils right here are filled with re of refrigerant, and then uh, it's cooled, and you can actually see this is ice, ice forming. Uh, so this particular dehumidifier can work down to 34 degrees Fahrenheit um, and that's important for us because we get really cold weather here so as long as we can keep this tent these grow lanes above 34 degrees Fahrenheit we can continually dehumidify them uh, and that's important to us obviously because uh, humidity leads to mold uh, and that is a problem that we're going to have to solve because we do have it um, so today what we're going to be doing is I'm going to be removing this dehumidifier and I'm gonna be putting it in line uh, with our new ventilation system. And I'll show you that as we start to piece it together. Uh, based on the engineering, based on the calculations that go with this, this particular dehumidifier should be enough to dehumidify both of our grow lanes to uh, where there is no more humidity in here. Uh, well, I'm sorry, it's down to about 50% is what the calculations are. That's where we want it at. That's where the plants are happy. Uh, and that should stop our mold problem. Uh, it should also help with heating because as this water condenses on the plastic right now, it's actually releasing heat. Uh, and we do not want that. That is bad. We need all the heat we can get. Uh, so that's what we're going to be doing today. That's kind of the background of what we got happening here. Uh, again, according to the calculations, this dehumidifier put in line with the proper airflow across it should dehumidify both the grow lanes uh, down to about 50% relative humidity. We'll see how it goes.